Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. Our summer 2022 streamathon was a blast for many reasons, including our theme of Chaos Nancy. I will admit to being a bit of a goody two-shoes, both in real life and in the video game world. So when I play the Nancy Drew games, I basically always choose the same dialogue options and actions. The nice ones, the polite ones, the rule-following ones, the good ones. While this may be within my comfort zone, it also prevented me from experiencing a great many events that the Nancy Drew games had to offer. And so this summer, Chaos Nancy reigned supreme. I tried to do all of the dialogue options that were snarky, sassy, or even just plain rude. I tried to get as many second chances as I could possibly get. I tried to put Nancy in all the dangerous situations and all the ridiculous ones. The result was a super fun streamathon, and if you haven't already watched all of the streams, I'll link the playlist for you in the upper corner of this video. Not so subtle plug aside, by the end of the streamathon, many fellow detectives asked, so which games were the most chaotic? Well, I'm finally here to answer that question, so let's get on with it. Now, chaotic means different things to different people, but for the purposes of this video, I define it as dialogue options or choices within the Nancy Drew games that go against the grain, if you will. The most chaotic games, in my humble opinion, give the player many opportunities to be mischievous, ridiculous, blunt, and sometimes even diabolical. The more of these choices, the more chaotic the Nancy Drew game. I also think that this needs to be on purpose. There are some Nancy Drew games that shall not be named, cough cough, midnight in Salem, ahem ahem, ransom of the seven ships, that are chaotic for all the wrong reasons. Deirdre jump scaring me or monkeys forcing me to play a game of chance for five hours might be diabolical, but it's not intended, which I personally believe is disqualifying. That caveat in mind, here are the five games that, after the Nancy Drew 2022 Streamathon Chaos Nancy Edition, reign supreme in my mind as the five most chaotic games in the series. Number five, Warnings at Waverly Academy. I think my favorite game deserves a place on this list because of the impressive level of choice that it offers players. You can easily play through this game without being in the least bit chaotic. You can be a grade A student, up on the valedictorian do-gooder list like the Waverly Girls themselves, earning credits to your heart's content. Or you can get expelled by being a miscreant, by breaking curfew, climbing trees by day, shattering glass bookcases, annoying page, breaking into rooms, and thwarting your duties. I love that this game gives you the option to play either way, while still allowing you to make it through the mystery unscathed. The fact that Nancy can get up to so much mischief is seriously entertaining, but combine it with the chaos of the gossip and rumors that assault Nancy's phone every few minutes, and you've got a drama-filled game perfect for lovers of chaos, if you so choose. Number 4, The Silent Spy this is another game that prioritizes choice in the form of the Revenant Calls. Nancy can easily ignore these calls and the game goes on, but she can also carry out all of the mysterious tasks for Revenant to get audio clips of her mother's final moments. It feels pretty diabolical and unsettling, perfect for lovers of chaos. What's more though is that all of the full-on spy moments add a certain feeling of absurdity to the game enhancing the chaotic choices. Nancy can shoot a bow and arrow, uncover a secret spy lair, bug suspects, literally and figuratively, zip line across a courtyard and hide from kidnappers. The second chances and possible death sequences are also pretty wild, from getting crushed in a trash compactor to getting quote unquote shot at in her own hotel room. 
While I do personally think that this game falls short in many ways, Chaos is not one of them. Number 3, Haunting of Castle Malloy. The chaos of this one comes from a few different places. First, the dialogue and the drama. The love triangle, the stubborn opinions, the arguments. This game is chock full of fun conversations to eavesdrop upon and instigate. Additionally, the hilarity. This game really plays up some pretty funny elements, like chasing sheep around the moors and then giving them absolutely absurd haircuts. Elvis sheep who? Also, the hauntings and the banshee. While the music in this game can sometimes feel serene, I'd hardly call the game itself relaxing. The constant threat of shrieking specters keeps the chaotic atmosphere rolling at all times. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the second chances. This game exceeds expectations when it comes to chaotic second chances. Nancy jumping across a sizable gap in the stairs, Nancy blowing up a jetpack, Nancy careening into the ocean after said jetpack malfunctions, Nancy traipsing across the bog and drowning, Nancy blowing up a rocket, Nancy blowing up chemicals. Really, there's a lot of explosions in this one. And what says chaos better than explosions? Number two, the final scene. This one gets to be on the list purely for the Class A chaotic dialogue. This is one of the only games where Nancy loses her proverbial mind, and I am here for it. She goes nuts on every single character in the game multiple times, and she doesn't hold back the sass or the trash talk. I frequently praise this game for hitting the atmosphere of distress and panic so successfully, a feeling that other games lack when they really should have hit it harder. The final scene, though, is a chaotic situation, a sudden kidnapping where Maya's life is at stake if the theater gets demolished in just three days. It would feel weird if Nancy wasn't freaking out at everyone every other sentence. So I say, well done, game. Well done. And finally, number one, The Phantom of Venice. In my opinion, this game hits the combination of absurd chaotic and dangerous chaotic just right. This is another spy mystery, and so Nancy frequently does a bunch of pretty ridiculous spy tasks, like feeding a tracking device to a pigeon and chasing the darn thing all over Venice, or dancing in a skin-tight catsuit to make a few extra bucks. She's also constantly breaking into places and even steals a legitimate spy's identity. The dialogue also allows Nancy to regularly gossip with suspects about the other characters, adding a nice touch of drama to support the chaotic mood. What really seals this game, though, is the details. Nancy can traipse around Venice in a clown costume if she prefers, or wear a ridiculous combination of clothing items that are completely unidentifiable as a specific look, unless you are Prudence Rutherford. The suspects will even comment on the clothing, showing that they are aware of just how goofy Nancy looks. The details within the second chances also help, like eating the raw, tainted sausages. It's so weird, but it works. Everything in this game is just a little silly, and in the right chaotic hands, that silliness can become expertly devious. So, there you have it, fellow detectives my five favorite chaotic games in the Nancy Drew series. I will say that there were a couple honorable mentions, like Captive Curse for just how rude Nancy can get in conversation, or Sea of Darkness for how ruthlessly Nancy can break Ned's heart, or Danger by Design, Ghost of Thornton Hall, and Midnight in Salem for their abilities to have different endings depending on chaotic choices made within the game. Regardless, though, I think these five capture the mischievous energy that a good chaos game requires. You can be a little silly in them, a little diabolical, and still have a good time. But what do you think, fellow detectives? Do you agree that these five games are the most chaotic? Do you think some other games should have made the list? What do you think makes a game chaotic? Do you prefer chaotic, neutral, or good playthroughs? Let a wizard kitten know in the comment section down below. 
If you really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button or tipping me for the video with a super thanks next to the download button right beneath the video. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I also have channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord, linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.